hi and hello and thank you so much for tuning in and if you are new welcome to my channel my name is Preeti Rao and I am both a real estate and a mortgage broker for close to 20 years. Now, did you read the recent article that came out in the Toronto Star where they claimed that the buyers are back? The Toronto real estate market's heating up after these three consecutive rate cuts. But where are the first time home buyers and why are they still out in the cold? Let's talk about what's mentioned in the article. But before we dig in, please hit the like, share, subscribe button and the bell icon. It gets me motivated to keep you up to date with everything real estate. Now, according to the article, since Bank of Canada's three consecutive interest rate cuts, which were in June, July and September, that bought the key overnight interest rate to 4.25 from 5%. Toronto Realtors have noticed an increase in phone calls and showings from buyers who have been on the sidelines waiting for the rate to drop. And when the rate started to drop, excitement started brewing among some. But first-time home buyers still need to see a significant drop in interest rates before jumping right into the market. In the meantime, sellers are struggling to navigate a buyer's market because buyers today have greater negotiating power. When the sales to new listings ratio is below 40%, it's a buyer's market, which the GTA has been in since May of this year. The Bank of Canada's rapid rate hike campaign, which began in March of 2022, dampened activity in the real estate market. So much so that even after the interest rates cut this past June and July, it wasn't enough to stir any momentum in the market. But the third interest rate cut on September 4th allowed some buyers to begin their home search and even put down offers. Buyers want to stay ahead of the home price increase, which will likely happen as buyers pile into the market, heating up the demand. Once this happens, it will trigger a wave of buyers entering into the market, or that's what we hope for. However, unfortunately, affordability is stretched for first-time home buyers. Interest rates are still too high for them because they must qualify with the stress test, which adds another 2% to the mortgage interest rate, meaning people must qualify for over the 6% range for a five-year fixed mortgage and almost over the 7% range for a variable rate mortgage. Now, for the average Toronto home prices of, let's say, a million dollars, households must earn around close to $200,000 and pay over $4,800 for a five-year fixed rate to over $5,200 for the variable rate on a monthly mortgage payment. Now, we are hoping that affordability will improve as interest rates come down, but we are unsure if they will actually return to the pre-pandemic levels over the next two years. Now, according to a report from Desjardins, interest rates on mortgages will drop, but home prices will likely increase, making it yet again difficult for first-time home buyers to figure out the right time to purchase. On the other hand, sellers are currently undergoing a different kind of a dilemma. Should they drop prices or hold out? I don't know if you have noticed, but listings for properties that sat on the market for 60 to 90 days in the spring and summer have been terminated and now are relisted back in the fall with new pricing. It's an extremely challenging market for sellers who are used to bidding wars and intense competition. They are now facing a different climate. There's a wealth of choices for buyers because active listings were up 46% year over year in August, meaning buyers can take their time when making that purchase looking for the best price. Now, agents are starting to see renewed interest among buyers when it comes to virtual and in-person showings, but nothing really sparks their interest. Maybe the wrong supply has technically hit the market. In Toronto, small condo units have driven most of the supply for the past decade, but many purchasers want to buy townhomes, semi-detached or detached homes and there's a lack of alignment between what is being built and what people really want. Right now, the product available is not what buyers are really looking for. At the end of the day, it impacts sales activities and results in condos sitting empty for a long time. On top of this, troubling signs in real estate 
already persist. An uptick of new listings entering the market are due to power of sales. There's also a rise in mortgage default crisis, a trend that economists say is likely to keep increasing as more mortgages come up for renewal. Economists are also factoring in broader economic concerns after the unemployment rate reaches 6.6% in August the highest since May of 2017, stroking fear of a recession. When the economy is troubled, people tend to hold on to significant purchases, such as buying a home. And these factors put a damper on things and create absolute uncertainty. Our only hope here is as interest rates continue to drop, as expected, the pile of inventory will lessen as more buyers gradually enter the market, creating tight supply and demand conditions again here is to hoping that this coming fourth quarter we'll see a noticeable increase in sales volume and slight increase in pricing maybe nothing too dramatic you tell me what you think and thank you so much for watching if you found this information useful please do not forget to subscribe and hit that like button if you still don't know who i am just go check my rating on google and read my client reviews join me next week for more information on what's going on in the market until then you stay safe and don't forget to call me because i hold the key that opens the door to your dream home